Hi, my name is Jess and I am a thriftaholic. Thank you for joining me. I am diving in to show you how to list and sell things on Etsy. Now, some of you may think Etsy is where people sell their handmade items, like one of a kind. But did you know that you can sell your vintage pieces as long as they are from the year 2000 or before? And technically, there is a different type of buyer on Etsy. People that shop on Etsy are not competing the pricing necessarily for when they are shopping. They are looking for that one of a kind piece. And I prefer selling on Etsy. I don't get people asking tons of questions. I just have an overall positive experience with Etsy. So I'm going to list on my phone through the app, which you have to have this special app for sell on Etsy, not just the regular Etsy app. It has to be sell on Etsy app and that's all free. There is no store subscription. There is a flat 20 cent listing fee that you are charged. The listing is up for four months and then you can have it renewed every four months automatically or you can relist it yourself. Personally, myself, my life's crazy, so I just renew everything myself or automatically, sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to list on your phone through the app. I'm also gonna show you how to list on the computer. I'm going to show you how I list, which I use uh, list perfectly. It's a Google Chrome extension and it's a cross listing tool that transfers the information and your pictures to all of these platforms. So I initially list my item on eBay and then I cross list on these other places. I'm going to show you how to delete a listing or deactivate a listing. And I'm also going to show you how to run a sale and coupons because up until Three weeks ago, I didn't know how to run a sale in my store, so I simply Googled it. And my sales, I've made probably, I don't know, four, four sales to the coupon. So stick around if these are things you're interested in learning. And I've only been selling on Etsy since the beginning of 2020, so I'm still learning as well, but I've had quite a few of you reach out to me about Etsy, so here you go. Okay, so here I'm going to show you listing on the app. I have an Android phone, if that makes a difference, I'm not sure. So simply click on the sell on Etsy app. As you can see, here are my stats and you will simply go to listings. And it's been a hot minute since I've actually listed through the app. I typically cross post with list perfectly. I will put my affiliate link down below. I believe you get a coupon and I swear by that cross listing company. They are amazing. Okay, so sorry, my little toolbars in the way. We are actually going to hit the plus up in the corner. And if you are listing vintage, which you probably are, you need to select another person or company, unless you personally made this item. What is it? It's typically a finished product. Now this is something to note, um, like I said, they only want vintage items on here. Oh, sorry, yeah. So these are items that you made yourself. They will not let you use these eras unless you claim that you made it yourself. So scroll down and I'm trying to forget, think what I'm listing. Okay, so I got a 1990s nativity set. All right, I finally found nativity sets. It's under religious. So this is what your blank draft looks like. I work my way down. So something that is a little odd. I remember when I first listed, this kind of confused me. How it showed these shapes is just kind of letting you know to use different angles of your item. So what's a good one? Oh yeah, I'm doing this. And I can post multiple, depends on your phone. I just click. I don't remember the maximum you can list, but I will just click it on them until I can't list anymore. So I selected 17. I don't think you can list that much, but we'll try. Select. I think you can only list up to 16. And you can also insert two four six eight ten oh i can only do ten so i will have to go through and make some collages which is also a tip i use I'm trying to think of what the app i use camera yeah right there um aren't they cute <laughs> i edited that picture earlier today 
can't I? Okay, this is being funny. You can select 10 pictures. You can also include a video clip up to 15 seconds for items that maybe are animated or if you want to like spin around wearing a cute dress or if you're modeling something. So while it's uploading those pictures, you can come in here and click on your title. Note you have 140 characters. Try to use almost all of the characters if you can. That is quite significant compared to other cross-listing tools. So vintage is almost always in my title. I'm not sure if it's 1990s or 1980s. I think it's 80s and I'll tell you because it's made in Taiwan. Most imported items that say made in Taiwan are generally from the 80s. Walmart, porcelain, nativity, set, I'm also going to include the word Christmas, nativity set, complete with box and stable, mint. I believe uh, they only let you capitalize up to two words maximum in your title. I'll say made in Taiwan as that's something people kind of look for. And I will simply copy and paste it because you also want to include the title in your listing. It helps with the search or so I've been told with Google. Okay. And I... Like, if you've heard the term dumb down, my descriptions are pretty uh, short. People don't like to read. I don't even do sentence form anymore. Mint condition. Chip. Crack free. Of course, typos, yeah. Chip crack free. Comes with. Fluff snow, which I don't think I showed. Complete set. And then I usually include measurements. Um, it's just something I, I do for most of my listings because people look at a picture and they can't tell how big it is and they want to know if it will fit their space. So this one looks to be about seven inches tall and nine inches wide I might want to include that the stable is wood you want to try to include measurements the ingredient in your item or material content and if you don't know, then just simply put you don't know or make your best ask guess. But okay, so that's it. Pretty short, right? Okay, done. Then you go to shipping. Shipping scares people a lot. This is something that you learn with experience. Type out notes, watch YouTube videos. I use Pirate Ship for all of my shipping. You can use eBay label or I'm sorry wrong platform. You can use Etsy labels, but I prefer Pirate Ship because they go by size, not necessarily by weight. So you most of the time get better rates. So I made generic um, charges. You can do calculated shipping if you want to get a shipping label through Etsy. I have that for one item I'm selling just because it's, I think, a larger object and bigger. I'm giving it a shot, like trying it out. But so three pounds I have here at $20, six pounds at 40. Most ones I use, I typically sell clothes or small hard goods. It's the first class, priority mail for $12 or priority mail flat, flat, flat for eight. Those are the most common. This item that I am selling is two pounds. So I'm going to select the $12 because if it's going to California, it will most likely take almost all of that $12. USPS just recently increased their rates so I want to make sure that I am covered. Renewal options. Like I said before. Automatic. And then tags. Okay, so tags are not the same thing as hashtags. Tags are CEO or SEOs. Sorry, SEOs. And this, I try to fill it up as much as possible. Something also to note, 
You want to include your store name. You cannot in, you do, cannot use any kind of punctuation, and you cannot use more than thirteen. You'll learn as you go. So, just think if you are looking for an activity set, what would you type? So I always try to type my name first. The lit bent my store name. Okay. You can see here my previous ones I have used. I can say nativity set. Also something to note is maybe you should type something misspelled that people may spell it wrong. You would be surprised. Uh, let's do Christmas decor. So you can only, if you try to type decorations, it won't let you see. You can only, I don't know how many characters that is, but I will say decoration and then I will say Christmas decor and then I will put religious decor whoops and misspelled that one do you hear the trains we live a few blocks away so it's a pretty common thing religious decor um how do I know what else to put what do you guys think? I'll put vintage Christmas. Okay. Um, as you can see here, I'm kind of drawing a blank now that I'm put on the spot. Mm, I'll put nativity scene. Baby Jesus. Virgin Mary. Oh. Wise men. Nativity. Stable. Walmart. Okay. That's good. So then you'll simply click done. I got my shipping. It's renewed. Added materials. I don't necessarily fill that in unless it's clothing and then I will try to put like if it's wool or whatever if I haven't listed it before attributes it says okay so holiday now here's your price I like to start high so with this one I think I will do $59.99 in a skew I don't skew my hard goods I just organize them by category in my basement so I don't use that but if you want to put like your cost of goods, that might be uh, a great idea. I honestly don't remember. It's been so long. It's probably, I think actually it was $2. That's why I got it. $2. And then sometimes I'll put the weight in. Since I'm cross listing it, I'll cross list it from here. Okay, two pounds. Done. And draft. No, save. Publish. Okay, you hit publish. And then this pops up. It is saying that you acknowledge, acknowledge that you will be charged 20 cents for your monthly billing cycle and you are automatically billed. And you see that it says four months. You can turn off auto renew, but unless you know that you will remember, it's just something easy. Okay. And as you see, you have that red circle that is showing as active. I'm trying to see. So I showed you how to list. Now I'm going to show you how to deactivate. Okay. So say something sells on a different platform and you want to erase it. You'll simply go to your listing and it has, remember, it has to be on the sell on Etsy app. Go to your listing you simply click manage down in the bottom left corner deactivate you will click deactivate okay so when you deactivate it it shows it's inactive but then I will go back so if you have something inactive um, maybe you want to make it unactive inactive until you ship the item out because sometimes buyers will cancel orders and so you can make it inactive until you actually ship it out and know it's gone for good but I just delete because my cancellation rate is super super low delete and obviously I'm not going to delete it because I just spent all that time making the listing but all you would do is click delete and it would be gone 
Okay, so that's that. I'm actually going to activate it because I want it to be an active listing. Okay, now I'm going to go downstairs, get on the computer, and show you how to list an item on the desktop. And then I'll also do a listing where I cross post through list perfectly. And that will sum up. All right, so here is the home of when I type in Etsy. I'm logged in. You will want to go to up here by your profile and click shop manager. Then you will go over to listings. And you will click the black icon that says add a listing. Okay, so now this is where you add your pictures. Obviously, you will need to have the pictures on your computer to do so, and I never list like this, but I am showing you guys, so I am actually, I emailed these pictures to myself, and there you go. As they load, I will go ahead and, like I said before, you can do a 15 second video. It's only available to upload on the website title. What am I uploading? I am uploading vintage Christmas material for sewing kits. There's vintage Christmas material ornament kits mixed lot 1990s 1980s whoops I believe it's bears and see these pictures I don't quite remember um animals standing Santa ornaments Vintage Christmas material ornament kits, mixed lot, 1990s, 1980s. Okay. Very similar to the app. I'm looking through my phone to do this, so my mouse, it's like taking me a hot second. I'm going to say 1990s because most of them that I have are probably from the 90s, a few maybe from the 80s. Okay, so I'm going to put Christmas, and then you'll see, I don't know if this would go under any other categories. Let me scroll through here real quick and double check, because obviously the more categories, the more likely it's to have people look at this. Quilty, sometimes these occasions are a little crazy, like, see what I mean? These are all for like special occasions, so I hardly ever use that, like ever. Holiday Christmas. And then here is where you put your description. And like I stated before, I always just copy and paste my title as you always want to do that. Or that has, that's what I've been told and that's what I do. Copy, paste. Now I'm going to put the phone down for a second so I can type with two hands and be more time efficient. All right, so I tried to put the title of each of the fabrics because that is something that people would look for. And then your next one is section. Now this is the section of your store. And at first I didn't have any of these, but I have branched out. I'm going to put these under home goods. Well, actually no, linen. Mm, actually, home goods. Technically, they should go under crafts, but I don't have a section for that. Here's the tags I've showed you before. The lit vent, the material, which I'll leave blank, and then your price. Your SKU if you want SKU. I usually never do variations because you only do that unless it's a, mul unless it's a multiple. Quantity listing, personalization, which I don't personalize my items. 
And then shipping, these items will actually be first class. And I will probably have to pay more than $4, but I overcharge, well, I don't overcharge, but I mark my items up so I can pay like an extra dollar or two for shipping, not a big deal. And then I don't put in any of this information because I get my shipping label through Pirate Ship. So I just, you know, I pre-made these. And, in, and to do that, you just click this enter custom shipping option and you can name it. So like I named mine by like the weight and type of shipping it is. So I did that when I first started listing. So then you go down here. So I leave that blank and I simply just click publish and then the box will pop up and say I'll be charged 20 cents and I say publish. And then your item is supposed to be active. I almost forgot to show you how I cross post using list perfectly. The symbol over here just simply means list perfectly. And this is how I actually list my items. I know before I showed you listing like from the very beginning, but I always use list perfectly. It's such a time saver and I'll show you how I do that. So you'll see here, I have a vintage holiday piece. I simply hit the icon and then it has Grailed, which is like men's streetwear, Mercari, Poshmark, Tradesy, Etsy, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, Depop, and Kidism. So I am just going to hit Etsy and you can select more than one, like, but for the video's sake, I'll just do Etsy. I have the most basic version. You can only cross list one at a time. If you upgrade, you can do several at a time. So it does take a minute. And as you see, my eBay thing popped up. Sometimes it does that. And you just have to sign in and then do it again. So let's do that again. Okay. So you gotta refresh. <sighs> Try again. And your browser does have to be open to your Etsy store. You'll learn that. Like, you need to do your own research with List Perfectly. It's several videos worth. But it is an easy tool. Okay. So. So, loading my pictures. There's all my pictures. I can't edit a video, which I will. I did take a video, I think 5 to 15 seconds. It does say that only 50% of buyers can see videos, but when something is animated or musical, I do like to include it. I'm trying to think if music, if sound is, oh yeah, see, it won't feature sound. Bummer. Well, you know what? It's not me worth putting in the video then. Okay. So here your title does transfer over. However, do you see that? I have several characters left. You can have very long titles, and so I recommend trying to use almost all those characters. Again, everything is the same. The only thing that is unfortunate, and this is probably because I have the lowest tier subscription, is that I still have to fill in these. But, like I said, the words all transfer over, and the title and the pictures, and that's usually what takes the longest. So I'll just go through here and select, you know, all these things, which will take me probably two minutes and then I'll hit publish just like my other listings. But this way it just, you know, it transfers over the title, the description and the pictures, which that's a big one. So I finished my listing and as you can see, I did not make a collage for all the pictures. Your primary is your main picture. So I will need to edit that and make it a collage of all these. Okay, got distracted. Now you will go over here, which is, you know, you're under shop manager and I'm going to show you how to run a sale and how to send out coupons to customers, potential customers. Um, marketing, sales and coupons. Okay, 
So the ones that they have that I really like are the Abandoned Cart, 15%. You can call it whatever. I just did code 123 because it was already there. Manage Campaign. As you can see, there have only been two emails sent, so not very effective. Also, when somebody favorites an item, they get a 10% coupon, but it's only showing two emails sent, and I don't think that's accurate because I get items favorited several times a day. My store, also, I didn't disclose earlier, I have like 160 items in my Etsy store, which is not very much. So, um, my other stores have about 800 items, and someday I would love to get there. Okay. Individual sale coupons. Here we have my first sale. I told you I recently figured out October 29th how to run a sale. So let's go to see details. I don't run huge coupons on Etsy. I just want to kind of see on eBay. I run a 15 to 20% off coupon, but here is the copy link. If I want to share that and it says I have zero revenue. That is also incorrect because I've had, as I showed you, at least two sales that were from that sale. So when does it run out? No, oh, no end date. Okay, so it's continuous. We will go ahead and for the video's sake, we will make a new one, okay? I really like dashboard. You should kind of just like play around with it. It shows you your statistics. There's a lot on here. Okay. I'm drawing a blank where it was at. Don't want to see my face. Oh my gosh, people. Sorry, my phone's blown. Shop manager, sales and coupons. I was on our marketing. Okay, so we'll go back to marketing. Sales and coupons. Aha. Up here in the corner. You'll click on new special offer. This will pop up. Run a sale. You can send offer to interested shoppers or you could create a coupon and share on social media. I have done this. There you go. That's a great idea. I just, I like everything that Etsy offers and I only use a small portion of it. So click run sale. So you can read this. Okay, run sale. So this is where you select the percentage off. You can also offer free standard shipping, but I do charge shipping for all of my items. Always have, always will. So I'm going to do percentage off. Here you simply choose your percent. So I'll do 15%. Now, where is this offer valid? You can set to be valid for a specific country. I only ship to the United States right now. So I don't need to worry about that. Sometimes in order to get the sale, you can have it where they have to buy more than one item. Duration. So we will select today, which is November 8th. And we will have this run one day. I'm just going to cancel it once I stop recording. Terms and conditions. Nope. Name your sale. Example. Shoppers won't see it, so it's just for you. Okay. So then you simply go down to continue, and it will take you to your items that you want to include in your sale. It's very similar to eBay. So here are my sections. All right, so finally got my home goods because I don't think I included these in my sale that I ran a couple weeks ago. So these are all kind of items that I just want to see move. Let's see here. If there's any that I want to deselect. I don't believe so. Let me make sure. 
So I'm going to deselect this Christmas item. This Halloween jemmy piece is also super rare. I just added that one, so I'm going to delete. Don't want that included. This one's a newer listing. That's new. These are all new listings. I've been listing a lot recently, so I don't want my new listings to be on sale quite yet. Okay. And then you simply hit black button here, review and confirm. It's going to show you a summary of your sale. I'm only doing 15 listings. And then you do confirm. Okay, your sale is now live. You can share on social media. All right, guys, let's go and check out my store real quick and then we'll sum it up so here's my store you can make a banner if you want to look at make a little more um i need to update mine this is when i first started my store canva is a great free app to make banners and everything for our social media platforms here i just made a collage for my icon with my name lit the lit vent Let's see, shows I have only made 21 sales. So I haven't had that many sales, but they're all for pretty high. So as you can see here, these are my new listings, or my newer listings. Vintage, 90s, and earlier. Unique. Um, World of Warcraft shirt was actually mine. So there's just a little snippet and I don't get that many. I've only had one review like feedback and I make personal notes for my Etsy sales because I'm trying to get better, like people to leave me feedback. So I look like a more trusted seller because as you can see, I used to make jewelry and that was in 2011, which is a very long time ago. So I have only gotten two positive feedbacks since I've started selling my vintage items. But there is Etsy in a nutshell. I hope this has helped you in some way. Okay, I hope those little tutorials kind of showed you and that's just a little crash course. I also wanna tell you my sales over the last month. So I went back 30 days and normally I have only sold a few items on Etsy a month, but I only typically list an item if it's $25 or higher. And most of my items are $50 and higher that I put on Etsy. So I made a total of $616 with only eight sales over the last 30 days. So that's pretty crazy. Um, so I will put a corner up here or a picture up on the corner so you guys can physically see what I sold. Okay, the first item, and I'm going from most recent to 30 days ago. Okay, the most recent I think sold this morning was a vintage Carhartt chork jacket and it's made in the USA which is important but the other part that makes it a bolo which is a be on the lookout is that it's a blanket chork coat so as you can see in the picture above there's actually like a an Aztec print lining on the inside that's considered the blanket and that's what makes it such a desirable piece I've had this listed for a few months I bought it over the summer at a yard sale for five dollars and at the time I didn't know it was that valuable it was just Carhartt and I had a few offers, but I knew I should wait. And it had, you know, the typical wear on it. It had blemishes. People don't care. They will wear things with holes and stains. And it sold on Etsy for $125. And then I always have buyers pay the shipping. And sometimes I make a few dollars on the shipping as well. The next item that sold yesterday, do you remember like in the 1990s, they were really popular. They were a decent sized uh, Christmas decoration. It's usually Santa or Mrs. Claus. And they were called motionettes. They were sold like at the mall. Menards also made them and such. And they are coming back. They are kind of a collectible nostalgia, if you want to call it that. And I picked up three of them, um, I don't know, maybe four months ago or less, maybe three months ago. For $5 a piece locally, I found them on Facebook. Facebook Marketplace can be your friend if you want to source locally. And the ones that are branded Motionette, it depends. Maybe you can only get like $50 or $60, but
but the one that I'm going to be showing you is actually from Menards and it was actually Santa, I think he was painting at his little workshop desk. And that one is rare. I didn't, I don't think I actually saw another one currently listed. So I aimed high and I listed it. I think I had it for $99.99 on eBay and all the other platforms, but I actually sold it on Etsy for $150. I also made $10 on shipping. This thing was 10 pounds, 10 pounds, and it's like in its original box, so it's kind of big, but shipping was surprisingly not too bad because it's just going like maybe five, four or five states. It's going to the Northeast, and I'm um, in mid the Midwest, and I'm in Illinois. Okay, the next couple sales, let's see. Oh, I got these 80s purple men's denim like skater shorts, so crazy purple denim and then those sold for 48 so those were included in my sale items that have I've had for like four to six months that haven't had much action I included in my sale which I'll show you um, I previously showed you actually and then the next item that I sold for $32 was this vintage gyroscope it's like a scientific toy it looked like kind of a top I think I got that for free through a family member and I've had that listed for probably close to two years the next item sold overnight, which is shocking to me. It was like a Vietnam era 1970s army parka. And I'm wondering, so I use like good keywords and I modeled it. Now with my vintage pieces, if I can fit into it, I think I'm going to start modeling it because I've done that within the last few weeks and my pieces have gotten tons of action and have been selling. Before I would have my nieces model because of course they're like teeny tiny, but um, due to COVID, we're kind of um, distancing ourselves at the moment. So I'm not sure what I'll do about that. But the jacket sold for $100 um, plus, I think, $12 shipping. Uh, what did I pay for that jacket? To tell you the truth, I don't remember. I'd have to look back. But I don't pay. I don't really pay up for my items. I live in a rural area. And um, thrift stores are pretty affordable around me. The next item was a 90s wool Aztec print jacket. It had like the blanket stitch, which is also probably a good key term to learn. And I'll try to put up a corner, a, a picture of the blanket stitch. That is um, something that people kind of look for. I've had that honestly for probably a year. I was glad to see it go. It sold for $41 and that was also included in my sale. The next item sold within, I think, two days, and it was like a 1990s style Santa Claus blanket with the fringe edge. It was by a company called Mohawk, and what made me pick it up was, so the fringe blankets you want to look up because they were very, very popular in the 90s, and this one said made in the USA. So that's what made me get it, and when I was checking comps for this Mohawk company, I didn't see any, but I just went with my gut, and it definitely paid off. So yeah, 60 bucks, that was great. And then the item that sold almost a month ago was this vintage Washington Wazoo sweatshirt. It had a large graphic on it and it was a decent graphic. So I picked it up for, I don't know, a couple dollars probably. And it sold within a month for $50 plus shipping. I believe I'll put the percentage up in the corner. Etsy's fees are very reasonable. They're comparable probably to eBay, maybe a little bit less. Something that did change about six months ago, so it's currently November 2020. About six months ago, I believe, Etsy started um, charging almost 13% for off-site ads fee. I have sold two items that way, but I honestly don't mind because like I said, I raised my Etsy prices are usually at least 25% higher than my items on eBay, so I really don't mind if I get charged that extra. Some people got super upset about it, and I just kind of roll with the punches. I'm happy to sell really anything on Etsy, so. I hope everything that I have shared with you has been helpful. If you sell on Etsy, let me know your store name below. I forgot to tell you my store name, which is a little thing, like that's important, right? It's called The Lit Vent. I will also put it up here. I was trying to think of something catchy that's trending so I don't sound like I'm getting older, you know, like I'm trying to use hip words or whatever. And what else did I want to tell you guys? 
go check out my store. Go look at other Etsy stores. That's how you learn how to list good keywords. You learn a lot about the vintage um, eras according to style, types of lace, types of patterns, all of those things. You need to you need to do some research, okay, guys? It's not just something that you can. Um, I mean, you can Google is your friend. You need to Google everything, but learn as you go, really, and YouTube. <laughs> All right, please subscribe if you are new to my channel or if you just have not subscribed yet and please hit that bell I do greatly appreciate it. I am getting close right now to um, The 1000 subscribers mark and my goal is to pass that threshold here within the next few months So please share my video give it a thumbs up on your way out and I hope you guys have a thrift delicious day. All right. Bye